wake me up to another good, good morning time to go. Well, hello, and welcome to the newest edition of Rambling Rides. This is a very special edition because it's our first centered on Marshall's Country Store. So, of course, I have a special guest, none other than my store manager, Kira. Hi, Kira. Hello. <laughs> so, we figured this would be a great opportunity for us to chat a little bit about the store and just the beginnings and how we order different things and the merchandise that we've brought in and a little bit about what you guys have wanted to see and new stuff for the future. We're actually on our way to go visit another country store and get some ideas and chat with the owner and it's all about understanding what brands work, what you guys want to see and what's working for other people too. So on the road trip we decided it would be fun to do a little Q&A and talk about some of the things that have developed in the store over its last two years of being open and running and what two you guys years. I know that's crazy coming up <laughs> so it is it's it's a pretty cool feeling and I think that it's all been a bit of a whirlwind for us because it kind of just fell together so to speak this wasn't something that we had really been planning for years and years I've known Kira for a long time and we've really enjoyed what we've been doing so far so we recently just got back from a big buyer show in Texas and that was a lot of fun you it know was. we went down last year and it was it was very intimidating last year yeah. I think because we didn't really know what to expect there is a lot of vendors it's there's <laughs> 15 floors of different vendors to see we couldn't get to everybody of course um, but it's it's really neat to see different products and people from all around North America yeah. just store owners and, yeah, yeah just talking with people getting ideas it was it was really cool we spent three full days in the trade show and we went and saw a lot of our main vendors that we've had in the store before and we also sourced some new things for some possible items to come in the future so I'm not gonna give any of that away right now um, but what was your takeaway from being in Texas is there any specific things that stood out I think it's really cool to meet new like Alberta like we're going mm -hmm. right now to someone who we met in Texas and they're from Alberta like that's yeah I think that's really cool building connections and networking networking yeah like, so that's a really good point because yeah where we're headed right now um, we had dinner with them and it was just one of those things where it, it was very organic and it just happened we met through friends of friends and we're like oh yeah we would love to see how you're doing things there and I think that everyone you meet and every store you go in you get inspiration yeah. you get new ideas even just how to lay out your products how yeah. to display things and we've we've changed up our displays A million multiple times, times. <laughs> and it's fun and, and I think that it's it's learning how to set things up to feature certain products yeah. too I think that that's all part of it because both Kira and I had no retail <laughs> experience <laughs> before this so we were just learning as we go and I think the locals really like the change up as well because then they come in and they're like oh this is new or yeah I think the change up is nice for everyone <laughs> yeah yeah and I think what our idea for the store is and what I originally wanted was something that feels very homey and so I've always been big on like I don't want it too cluttered I don't want when you walk in to be overwhelmed I just want you to feel like oh this is a nice space I feel very comfortable yeah. here and uh, I hope that you guys feel that too and please <laughs> let us know <laughs> if uh, we're accomplishing that or not uh, but that's what I always feel because I know I'm not a huge retail shopper which is a funny thing for someone who owns a store but I've never been a big shopper but I find I get intimidated when I walk into a store and there's too much to look at and it's packed and you feel claustrophobic yeah. I don't want to be in the space and I usually end up just leaving and so I found that that's for me personally so we do things in the store like we only put out one of each size of the items instead of stocking you know everything that we have for that item we're like let's just keep it simple because really you know once that size is sold and you found your size then we can put a new one out and um, it also keeps everything in check and it yeah. keeps everything organized and for our store storage has been probably the biggest factor of what we've been trying to navigate because it's not a very large store we don't have much storage so when we bring items in 
finding places to put them is always a little bit of a challenge. Yes. And so then when things go up online, we don't have as many items as we would like, so sometimes they sell out fast. So I think it's a balance of learning and they're really involved with the ordering of products, which I really appreciate by the way, <laughs> because it's, it is difficult to just go in and say, okay, like I like this, but are other people gonna like this? Yeah. And I think that having two or three or four people looking over the order really helps to kind of be like, okay, yeah, that, that's gonna be a good item because we're all in unison on agreeing to bring it in. So is there certain things that you look at when you're putting together an order? Do you find that there's certain things that you're like, that's going to be a, a hit? And is that just a gut feeling or is that something that you've gained over the last year and a half of people buying? I feel like going back on what you said about putting one item out of each, it makes us engage with all of you guys. So then I get a feeling of what you guys like or what you don't like. And I think that helps picking the orders mm -hmm. a lot because we're constantly engaging with you guys and, and it's it's funny how having a storefront having people coming in yeah. off the street really helps with you can because oh, yeah. a lot of people maybe they won't they won't like something but they're not going to say it they're not going to you know no. write in and say we really don't like this item but if they're there they're gonna be like oh you know i like this but do you have it in a different color yeah and so then automatically we're going oh this item is good but we need it in red yeah. or, or whatever yeah. it might be and also learning the seasons yeah. and learning how early to put things out and I know there was a time last year when there was still snow on the ground and people were asking for shorts, shorts yeah. <laughs> and for us we were like what already but it's true they're they get in the the summer yeah. mindset and other stores have things out already so it's just it's learning the seasons and and what needs to be to be put out now many of you have expressed interest on how the store came to be and kind of what the the inspiration was for it and it's funny because it, it kind of just happened organically. I really enjoy real estate and I like finding buildings or houses that need a little TLC and fixing them up and either renting them out or finding new homes for them, uh, new people to occupy them, I guess. And when the Marshalls building came up for sale, I thought, you know what, I've never had a commercial space before. It was a really cute building, really great price because it needed a lot of work. And I had the winter off from Heartland and I thought, you know what, I love winter projects. Here's something that I can kind of sink my teeth into. And so I started going to work renovating it. And the store itself was a diner at the time. And the upstairs had a bachelor apartment. So the diner was still functioning and running. I decided to start work on the upstairs and did a full gut. It was in need of a lot of TLC. So we ripped everything down with the help of a friend of mine. We put in all new appliances and bathrooms and all that kind of stuff and it was a lot of fun and the whole process while I was doing this I was thinking about one day when the um, current tenants move on how cool that space is and maybe I could eventually turn it into a store or something like that well I didn't think that was going to happen for a while but in the meantime while I was renovating the upstairs I got notice from the diner tenants that they were going to close their doors, they were going to do something else, and um, that that space was now up for grabs. And so I thought to myself, well, I either find another commercial tenant to fill that space right away, or I get my button gear and start renovating that space. <laughs> and so something that was an idea for the future all of a sudden became an idea of the current times. and. I went to work but I never really had a plan in place you know I wasn't thinking oh this is gonna happen right away so as I was renovating the space I was now also thinking now I have to find vendors and I have to find products and I have to find people and a good team to help run the store so I was with Kira one day and I said so what are your thoughts on managing the store and here we are two years <laughs> later <laughs> And it, it's funny because, you know, neither of us come from a retail background. No. Um, we didn't really have any idea what we were doing. And I think that's what was so great about it is that we dove in and learned everything we could and are yeah. still learning. And that's part of what we're doing today, actually, is we're going to visit another Western store and just chat with them a little bit about layouts and, and things that, that can help with marketing and, and all those things because you're constantly learning and you're constantly learning from the people around you. And so I think that that's one thing that's been a lot of fun for us is the fact that we both came in knowing nothing 
And so now when we do something or we tackle something new, it's like, okay, so who are the people that are doing this well? Yeah. And going and visiting with them and, and just seeing, you know, what, what makes their store work and applying some of those principles in our store. And another thing that's really important for us is customer feedback. Of course, when you're in retail, um, you can't just bring in the stuff that you like because that might not be what everybody else likes. Yeah. So we've learned a lot about that and I think, Kira, you're on the store floor um, a lot more than I am. So what are some of the things that you've learned over the past year and a half communicating and talking with people from around the world who have come into the store and things that they want to see or that they enjoy seeing? It's been great to meet people from all over the world and hear all of their stories and the reason that they're coming to Marshalls. We try to find items that are very easy for people to bring home and travel with. Yeah, and I think that's something that is very unique to our store is the fact that there are people coming from great distances, traveling on planes, and so for us to have some items that aren't as breakable, you know, things we try to think when we're ordering, okay, what's easy for someone to grab for a gift for someone or to take back on the plane with them. So we have a lot of different ball caps and smaller items, jewelry, things like that, that um, we have just taken into consideration that it's easy to travel with, it's lightweight, um, that kind of thing. So that's one of the, the things that I think is maybe different about our store is it's not just local traffic, it's sales from around the world. And that's one thing that we're really starting to, to see with our online sales too, is our reach and how there's items, and Kira does a lot of the, the shipping out of items. And you know, you're seeing stuff go to Australia and Europe and really all over. all over the world. And so that's one thing that, again, with some of our in-store items, we can't offer them online because certain things break, they're really hard to travel with. Um, so we do have some things that are unique to the in-store experience and then we have things that are available online that we know probably won't get damaged in travel and it is hard because we can't, once they leave our store it's really hard to be able to control how the carriers are taking care of them and we try to wrap them and protect them as best as we can. It's been a really cool journey over the past year and a half from going from you know a team that really doesn't know what they're doing no. <laughs> <laughs> to, to figuring it out as we go and um, it's been really fun and I think that I've learned a ton and I'm sure you have oh, too. Oh yes, a lot. <laughs> and even little things like I remember in the beginning uh, when we would do our orders I would pick things I liked, Kira yeah. would pick things she liked, and then the order would come in, we're like, oh, we have similar tastes, and everything looks the same. It's all blue. <laughs> yeah, it was all blue. Yeah. And so I think that that's been a really good learning experience, too, is looking at all the products from all these really great companies and saying, oh, you know, we might not wear that, but we really like that item. It would look good on somebody else. And so taking into account that not everybody likes the same style and color, and just knowing what people want yeah. and what ships well. And That's true too, you know, yeah. finding items that are easy to ship and, and also that you know the quality. And that's something we've experienced too. You know, we've ordered things online that looked great in a photo and then they show up and we're like, maybe it's not for us. Yeah. So we've learned that going and seeing the products physically and being able to touch them is really important. Knowing the quality, knowing the brands, um, because we also have a lot of local vendors too. Yeah. And we love our local vendors because we get to work a little bit more personally with them. Yeah. We can tailor to the general feel of our store. Um, I And, you know, a lot of people ask us, well, how did you find your local vendors? Some of them have come to us and presented their work and we love it. And some of them have been items that both Kira and I or other members of our staff have personally worn and loved. I know I see you've got a wild rag on right now. Yes, Brown Creek wild rags. Mm -hmm. Very nice. They're, and they're, there you go. There's a store <laughs> shout out. Um, but that was a company that we found through doing some local research where um, one of the gentlemen who's a wrangler on Heartland, he wears a wild rag every day, winter, summer, doesn't matter. He always has one on. And I went up to him and I said, Bo, you're the guy to go to for wild rag research. I said, where, where do you shop? And he says, oh, I get Brown Creek wild rags. So then we reached out to them and it's things like that where you want to talk to the people who are wearing this stuff daily to know what works for them. Products that we know and we have used and we trust and we know the quality. And that's one of the things I love about the local 
um, vendors. And I know you've you've gotten a lot of different products yeah. and kind of brought them into the store after you know that they're yeah. great. I got this lovely purse from Lady Loca and she handmade it for me and made it all custom to what I wanted and yeah now we carry Lady Loca and she makes all custom bags and jewelry and it's just little things like that getting mm -hmm. things that we know and love and yeah and it's it's also nice again we want to support the local yeah. vendors but being able to know exactly where they're made, how yeah. they're made, and they're also small batches, yeah. right? So you're getting almost a one-of-a-kind product, and that's what's kind of cool about it too. And that touches on our storage of our little store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and having being able to order small quantities is yeah. is really great. Well, we're just at our first stop, so we're gonna run in, and uh, we'll touch base with you guys when we're back. We are all Well, we just came out of Western Stockman and we switched drivers. I thought I would drive on the way back. Um, but we had such a great visit with the owner, Lacey. She was incredible and gave us some really good insight into really what it takes running a Western store. And she has some really great stuff there. So big shout out to Lacey at Western Stockman. And if you guys are in Lethbridge, Alberta, make sure you check her out. And we're headed home now. The sun's starting to set. We've had a full day on the road. And uh, had a really great, really great time. Yeah, we had a nice awesome. lunch. We met with some friends. We kind of took the day. Um, so that's why that's why we have hours at the store that are closed. So we can do all these other things. <laughs> and um, that small business, right? You got you've got a nice small team, and we just do things together and have a lot of fun doing it. Um, but we thought before we go and sign off here, there's been a lot of different fan questions on things about the store And so we wanted to answer a few of those number one You guys have been asking if there's anything that's going to be happening as far as events And so we can tell you that we have decided the weekend of May 25th Mark it on your calendars We're gonna do a big event at the store. So that's one date that you'll want to and then we might, depending on how busy the summer is, do something in August as well. So we just wanted to let you guys know those dates for those who are planning travel. And and please, like, if you're coming into town, come, come see us. Come visit us. We don't have to be having an event at the store to come say hi and check out what's there. So we're, yeah. we're always there. Yeah. <laughs> and other than that, do we have any other? I think that's everything. Okay. Well, we want to thank you guys again for tuning into this video and for being a part of this community and not only supporting myself, but supporting this adventure that yeah. we're on. So we appreciate it. And thank you, Kira, for your time and for thank coming with you. me today and, and putting putting a face to the name too, because yes. a lot of you have communicated with Kira and it's nice to be able to say hi. Yes. So thank you guys. Take care and we'll enjoy the rest of our road trip. We are all